Hello everyone, Katie again. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. It's, the weather's been kind of up and down lately. Um, Christmas is around the corner and I thought about a movie I watched <clears throat> several years ago. And this isn't just about Christmas, it's also about authenticity. So there's a movie and there's a book too. I've never read the book, but I saw the movie. It's called Journey to the Sky. It's the story of uh, Sadhu Sundar Singh. So Sundar Singh was a, a Christian missionary in India in the early 20th century who eventually went to Tibet um, and talked to people there. But the important part of the, the movie that relates to what I'm gonna talk about uh, happens in his home country of India. So Sundar Singh uh, grew up in the early 20th century in a time when it was still common uh, in, in Indian culture that if the father died that the oldest son became the head of the household and was responsible for the mother and you know everything. So uh, And, and that continued for a long time. Um, so anyway, the movie starts off centering on a character called Ram. And Ram has some kind of a female friend, maybe a love interest or romantic interest named Shanti. So Ram's father has just died. And it's not his responsibility to take care of the family and provide for everyone. And he's feeling overwhelmed. You know, he's, he's lost his father, and now he's got this heavy load placed on him. And Shanti gives him this book. And it's it's the story of Sundar Singh. So, um, ultimately, he, he finds hope in it and becomes a Christian. That's kind of the point of the movie. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about two things. So one is... Sadhu Sundar Singh was uh, a, an Indian Christian who decided early in his, his life as a Christian, I don't want to become a westernized Christian. I'm an Indian. I don't want to look like a European. I don't want to look like a colonizer when I go and talk to my people. Uh, about Jesus because he didn't feel that was authentic to who he was and so that was something he became known for was he adopted the title of sadhu which is not a Christian term it, it's it was primarily uh, used for Hindu uh, religious figures and he wore traditional Indian clothing he didn't dress like a westernized uh, Christian missionary would have at the time and he went about uh, his ministry as an authentic Indian uh, Christian, which was, was a little bit controversial. And early in my transition, when I was dealing with, uh, you know, needing to transition, but also being a Christian and the expectations that were put on me to look and act a certain way and, and Christians do or don't do certain things because of church culture, I guess. Uh, I had found this movie and I watched it and it, it really spoke to me because I, I, I was at that crossroads where I felt like, well, I need to be authentic. I need to be who I am, but I still believe in Jesus. And how do I work this out? Um, and that really helped me. That really helped me a lot because it helped me to understand that I can be who I am. I can be authentic and, and be unashamed of it and still be honest in dealing with people and saying, Hey, I believe in Jesus. And this is what, these are the teachings of Jesus. And, and I can also be honest about the church and what it does. And a lot of it's not good. And people take that 
a little more seriously than somebody who's who's wearing a costume and comes in trying to look and act a certain way uh, and portray a certain image. You know, Christianity, as it's practiced today and really throughout its whole history, has been fraught with problems. And I don't think that it's something to shy, shy away from. I think it should be discussed openly. Uh, but more so, I think we just need to be authentic and genuine with who we are and, and not try to deceive people and try to make them think we're somebody we're not. You know, I'm not going to wear a suit and a tie and, and, you know, do the whole Billy Graham thing. I'm Katie. I, I'm a woman. I, I dress a certain way, uh, usually very casual. I'm not going to do the whole Sunday best thing. Uh, so moreover, uh, in this movie, since I mentioned Christmas, I want to talk about this. Uh, so going back to Rom, the, the central character in the early part of the movie. So his father just died, and as it turned out, he got this business card from a, a fellow student uh, a little bit earlier before the movie starts. And the student had said, well, my father is this businessman, and if you ever need a job, please contact him. Well, Rom, not being a Christian and not being familiar with Christian holidays, with his father having just died, decided to go contact this guy. So he shows up at their house, knocks on the door. Well, it turns out it's Christmas. And the father, who, who I guess is supposed to be a Christian, answers the door and is belligerent to him. You know, don't you have any sense? Don't you know what day this is? You show up at my house on Christmas looking for a job and sends him away. Um, so I wanted to, to talk a little bit about, you know, what is the spirit of Christmas and who, what was the whole thing with Jesus about? What are we supposed to be doing as Christians? So at the beginning of Jesus's ministry um, in Nazareth, his hometown, the first thing he ever read uh, from scripture was from Isaiah, and you can find this in Luke chapter 4. And he read this, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So what are we supposed to be doing as Christians, especially around Christmas time when we're supposed to be remembering Jesus? We should care about the poor. That's the very first thing that he mentions. You know somebody who's in, a, in an unfavorable situation financially or they just, they're, they're not making ends meet? That should be your first priority. You know, get out there and help people that are, that are struggling. To proclaim release to the captives, uh, I think some translations uh, make that prisoners. Whichever way you interpret it, whether it's prisoner or captive, anybody who's in a situation where they don't have freedom. I had a friend that spent seven years in prison. He was my best friend. And I was the only person that wrote to him in those seven years. I wrote to him regularly. And I, we still have each other's letters. That was almost 20 years ago. Um, that is so valuable. If you know people who are in jail or prison, or, you know, in today, here in the United States, maybe you know some immigrants who aren't legal and they're afraid. They spend every day in fear. And that's a captivity. And believe me, that's a captivity. You have somebody who's just trying to make a living and trying to survive and they're afraid constantly that, you know, ICE is going to show up and, and take them away. Remember them. Visit them. Be kind to them. Help them. Recovery of sight to the blind. You know, 
know, people got medical problems and they can't afford it. Maybe they're diabetic and they can't afford their insulin and you got a little extra money. Help them out. You know, this, this is a huge problem in the United States is our medical system is broken. And people are going without proper medical care because they can't afford it. If we can share each other's burdens, Christmas time is definitely the time to do it. Set free those who are oppressed. Uh, again, if you know anybody who's oppressed, even if it's not jail or prison or you know legal status as a citizen, maybe maybe you have friends, somebody like myself who's trans or gay or lesbian or or something, and their family oppresses them. Maybe they're a teenager and their family threw them out. Give them freedom. Say, here's our home. It's open to you. Come in. Have, have a Christmas dinner with us. If your family doesn't want you, we want you. We'll give you the freedom to be who you are. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Well, that's today. Um, it's always the year of the Lord's favor, and we should always be going around uh, blessing people with that. So, I hope you have a great week. I hope that this message means something to you. Uh, you know, maybe, especially like if you're retired, maybe your kids live far away and you're not going to be seeing them. Maybe get involved in a food ministry on Christmas reach out to those who don't have anything and help feed them, bless them. Get involved in clothing drives and, you know, necessities drives for the, um, you know, for unhoused people. All fantastic things you can do. And if you've got young kids and you, maybe they've told you that they've got a friend whose family's mistreating them because, well, for really any reason, but especially if it's because they reject them for, you know, being trans or gay or bi or lesbian or any of that stuff. Even if they're just abusive, you know, for, for no other reason. You know, just, they're just mean. Invite them into your home. Say, today we're your family. You come be with us. So I hope you have a great week. Um, Christmas coming up. Things are pretty busy. I don't know if I'll be recording more, but... Anyway, I hope this message means something to you guys. Bye.